and welcome to Sunday on the Political Ranter Show. Thank you for joining me on the Sunday. It's been a few days since I've done one of these, and now we are reaching the Sunday with Diane Abbott on the Andrew Marr Show with the Scottish budget being unveiled. It's time we talk about these things. So basically, Diane Abbott was on the Andrew Marr Show today putting forward the case of Labour being in government to sort out this Brexit mess which we are in. She set out Labour's plans for a Brexit and Labour's plans for fair immigration rules and Labour's plan for a priority of jobs in the economy. Now, Labour's position on the single market is they want either a close relationship with the single market or stay in the single market. And Andrew Marr asked Diane Abbott about the possibility of paying to stay in the single market after we've left the EU. And Diane Abbott admitted that we might have to pay to stay in the single market after we've left the EU. Now, obviously we are still unaware of what the Tories will get when it comes to our trade and when it comes to what kind of deal they will get when it comes to our single market but when it comes to our close relationship with the single market that's definitely something I will support even if we're not members I will definitely support a close relationship and if paying into the single market helps our economy this is something I would obviously support but we need to see how the Tories go with the negotiations. Now, the advantages of being in the single market versus having more control over our trade deal is a very difficult situation to be in because obviously the single market is our biggest export and we definitely don't want to lose that trade because that could damage our economy which is something I've said before and our relationship with the single market is very important but if we change that deal so we still have a close relationship with the single market and paying into the single market is something that will benefit our economy is something that Labour should really consider and something that the Tories should consider as well. Now staying in the single market fully as a full member also means staying in the four freedoms which also means most controversially freedom of movement and freedom of people coming to this country. Now this is something that has been a long issue in the UK with immigration some people believe being too high and undercutting wages for British people in this country. Diane Abbott was asked about this this morning on the Andrew Marr show and she said that Labour supports fair and reasonable management of migration when it comes to this country. And Diane Abbott has said that EU citizens might actually need visas when it comes to coming to this country. Immigration policy will definitely be less democratic than what is being proposed by the Tory government right now. For my opinion, I definitely think that immigration is good for this country and if we did have a controlled immigration system after we leave the EU, that is something I could support. I definitely would want fair balance and rules because when you think about it, we wouldn't have a health service and we wouldn't have a workforce if it was for immigration. Only 40% of our NHS staff got their qualifications from abroad and that could really have a huge impact on the amount of workers we have. If you have the skills that we're looking for and if you want to come here, work and pay your taxes into economy to generate our economy you should be allowed to come and work here and definitely pay back into the system it will definitely be good for British businesses it will definitely be good for social care and it will definitely be good for our workforce so we need to remain an open and friendly country with the correct precautions and with the correct screening processes and with the correct positions to make sure we have a fair and legal immigration process which does not get out of control now one thing I do disagree with Labour on is I do disagree that Labour do not support a second EU referendum when it comes to this, I definitely do support a referendum on deal. I do not support a second EU referendum on whether we should stay or leave the EU because that's already happened and that's already done. But when it comes to the final deal, I think we should have a final deal on that. And if we reject that deal, there should definitely be more negotiations and there should definitely be more talks. Or we could just use the option to stay in the EU. This is what I think about democracy and this is what I think about the final deal. See, it's fantastic that MPs are now getting a vote on the final deal, but this is just not enough because this is something that will affect ordinary citizens as well. MP so we should be able to vote on it. So the next thing I want to talk about is the police cuts because that was also mentioned in Diana Abbott's interview. Obviously being Home Secretary this is something that is really important to her. There are 20,000 less police officers on our streets since 2010 since when this Tory government came into power and this is due to cuts cuts and more cuts so they are making our streets less safe and they are making our streets less viable for citizens to walk through at night. Lives are being put at risk and we are in a less safe position to tackle things like terrorism because if our police forces are getting cut and if we have less police officers on our streets we will be in a less able position to tackle these things which is why police needs the executive funding that it requires to keep our streets safe and this is something that is not being happening under this Tory government which is very dangerous for our British streets. Diana but does come into power I definitely think this is one of the key areas that she should definitely be focusing on. More police officers on our streets and more safer for our citizens. Next thing I want to talk about is the Scottish budget which is more impressive and better than the Tory one I'll tell you that. 
reading this for the show today, I definitely think, wow, maybe I should really move to Scotland. Okay, it's not perfect. No budget will ever be perfect, but I, I definitely see some improvement on the Tory budget, and I definitely see less austerity, and I definitely see less blaming the working class for our country's economy crisis. Four hundred million pounds of increase in NHS spending which will protect the NHS which will protect like free medicine which is something that is available over there and not available over here which is something that really needs to be sorted out. Jeremy Hunt get on that. Seven out of ten taxpayers will pay less tax in Scotland when they're earning less than 33k and I gotta tell you when it comes to taxes I always support people paying their first taxes always support people paying the amount of taxes they own because the amount of taxes they owe goes back into the system and goes back into the economy and protects our public services so you tax dodgers out there need to understand that you're taking away from vital public services you have to contribute to this economy and we all have to make sure this economy is as best as it can be and tax dodgers are a threat to that they are a threat to our public services as well we also support the SNP's commitment to scrap the public sector pay gap and put a 3% increase on that which is something I want to happen in England as well but obviously the Tories will not do that because they are a threat to our public services just as much as tax dodgers are. See with the Tories plan to cut corporation tax is an even more threat to our public services we know what side the SNP are on and we know what side the Tory government is on. The cost of living is rising in this country and I'm glad to see the SNP take a bit of consideration when it comes to this and a bit of consideration when it comes to forming their new budget. Also introduce things like Frank Law which will guarantee free elderly care and which will guarantee free social care for people under the age of 65 it will also increase the carers allowance and they'll also introduce things like free sanitary products in our education facilities which is something i would definitely support free sanitary products will tackle things like period poverty which is something that is a big issue for children in poverty a commitment that i like from the scottish budget is 756 million pounds pledge to build affordable housing and they did scrap right to buy when they were in government, which is something I also agree with. Also, I really like the fact that they are pledging £100 million a year to mitigate Tory cuts, and especially no one in Scotland has to pay the bedroom tax, which is something that, okay, I may not agree with all of the SNP's policies, but I can understand what they're trying to do to protect people from Tory cuts, which is something I would definitely support a Labour government doing as well if they were in Hollywood. One of their next policies that I like in their budget is dubbing childcare to 33 hours a week for eligible children which will allow parents to get back to work and parents to make a living for themselves which is something I would definitely support. Lack of affordable childcare in this country is definitely an issue and parents having to not work to take care of their children is definitely an issue. Helping parents get back to work is something I would always support and I would always support working parents getting back to work when it comes to a UK or Scottish budget. Like their investment of £50 million into end homelessness and to end poverty funds i definitely like that investment because if there's something that needs to be tackled in this country is poverty and homelessness being one of the richest countries in the world we shouldn't have so much poverty and we shouldn't have so much homelessness but we are because of these government's choices i'm really glad that the scottish government is taking action to do that in scotland they would not vote for the smp because of their stance on independence however i can understand that their budget is much better than the tory budget which literally is accountable for so many deaths late to austerity. Definitely respect the SNP's protection of free medicine and free tuition and free childcare and I would definitely encourage that to happen over in England but under this Tory government we know that will never happen. So my overall opinion of the Scottish budget is it's better than the Tory one and if I had to choose a budget between which one to live on, the Tory one or the, or the SNP one, I would definitely go for SNP because some of these commitments that, that the SNP are making is definitely helping the working people and it's definitely protecting things Things like free tuition, like medicine, and that will help the working people. The Tories budget makes no such commitments. So you're going to get a bollocking from my Labour colleagues next time I see them because I just said that. <laughs> the next thing I want to talk about is Remain rising in the polls recently, judging from the Independent. Remain is now at 51% when it comes to how the British people would vote if there was another referendum tomorrow. Is this buyer's remorse? Is this not knowing what you were voting for? Is this what being lied to by a bus does to a political position? Uh, I think yes. Yeah, there are some legitimate reasons to leave the EU and there are some legitimate reasons to stay in the EU. But judging from how terrible the Tory government is at handling the situation, it took 18 months 
to commit rights of EU citizens in this country, and that is a national disgrace. So I'm definitely not surprised that Remain is rising in the polls. The EU is not perfect. I've blasted them for their United States of Europe. I've blasted them for not doing anything on Catalonia. So I'm definitely turning into a tiny bit of a Euro skeptic myself. But when it comes to EU, I think we can change the EU together. Definitely make a Europe work better for us. Waiting on our trade negotiations, and we are still waiting on stuff like that to come forward. But the thing is, even though I supported Remain, I cannot support another referendum. Just because I didn't win this referendum, just because my side didn't win this referendum, doesn't mean we should have another one because what if they vote leave again and we're just going to call for another one which is something I've argued before we have to respect democracy however we have to respect the least damaging Brexit deal possible which will protect economy, jobs and all that stuff which I've mentioned before these people pay attention to what you're voting for and please campaigns do not lie to the British public because they will vote for things and now we are in a complete messed up situation seriously believing that our NHS would get a 350 million pounds a week if we voted leave that is just something that is completely inaccurate and completely stupid I cannot believe people actually believe that remember guys none of this would have happened if Ed Miliband was Prime Minister and saying that, I, I kind of feel hypocritical for saying that because I did not vote for Miliband. I was a Green back in 2015 because I did not like some of M. Miliband's promises, especially with Trident, and especially only loaning tuition fees to £6,000 instead of scrapping them all together, which I'm delighted that Labour has committed to in Corbyn's manifesto. It's time for waiting, and of course, I will keep you all updated on the EU situation when we get more news. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is Labour ready for government. For the majority of my life, I wasn't a Labour supporter. So I was green up until Corbyn. So coming from an unbiased position on this, I definitely think Labour would be ready for government because even if they weren't ready, the Tories have completely messed up the country and the Tories do not know what they're doing. As I've completely said before, watch all my videos before, you will know that the Tories do not know what they're doing. So we couldn't get much worse, could we? And I definitely think that the Labour government would stick up for working people and stick up for working people when it comes to Brexit or the Tories would create a Brexit deal that will favour the rich instead of the working class. Corbyn's manifesto is missing things. It's missing things like the monarchy, abolishing the monarchy. It's missing things like abolishing the House of Lords and abolishing Trident. I think all things Corbyn agrees with and I'm disappointed they, that they aren't in the manifesto. So yeah, even though Corbyn's manifesto is not perfect, I would definitely choose this manifesto over the Tory manifesto. Well, we can't get much worse, can we? Thank you for joining me on this Sunday and I will see you all next time on the Political Anders Show. Have a good day, everybody.